No doubt there is now overwhelming interest in space exploration by every major nation on our planet. It just seems world governments want to explore space for themselves rather than rely on secondhand information being handed down by the superpowers of our planet decades down the line. The sheer effort involves to put even the shortest mission either up into orbit or to explore other worlds or asteroids near the Earth is one of such massive financial input that even the slightest mistake could unravel it all. So you would have to suspect that these shorter, smaller scale missions by countries that are emerging from industrial revolution or even suppression in some cases, you would have to think that logically all this effort and expense must have benefits to the massive undertaking involved, right? Or perhaps there is another answer. Did you ever consider that the American presence in Japan, Korea, and the Pacific and Atlantic oceans, as well as the American influence in global markets in Asia and Europe, could in fact be the result of a modern empire without even having the need to put boots on the ground? That's just a thought, guys. But it is a curious one that we are trying to develop into an idea. And the point of this way of thinking is in that of funding for space exploration by the United States in regard to these smaller countries in an effort to have it appear that these nations are developing these things themselves without outside influence. These small scale missions could be in preparation to either an asteroid threat or a global Star Wars defense system or both. And this could be an effort to sneak this technology up into space under the noses of the Chinese and Russians in a bold effort to win the modern space race. Just a thought, remember? The National Near-Earth Object Preparedness Plan was announced recently by the federal government and as you very well may know, and this has drawn attention the world over for the very reason that on the day NASA published this plan, President Trump was on the news boasting about the new Space Force fleet. Was this in fact to draw attention away from this major news? So basically this is billed as an asteroid awareness strategy to not only detect near earth objects, but also to guide or destroy those objects from this planet, which may pose a threat to the survival of the human race. This is a key plan in a global response to any comet or asteroid that comes within 30 million miles of the earth. The plan establishes five overarching strategic goals to reduce the risk of NEO impacts through improved understanding, forecasting, prevention, and emergency preparedness. The plan will enhance detection, tracking, and characterization capabilities and improve asteroid modeling prediction and information integration, develop technologies for NEO deflection and distribution mission and also increase international cooperation on NEO preparation and established impact emergency procedures and action protocols according to NASA. More than 300,000 objects larger than 40 meters 131 feet wide orbit the sun as near earth objects. According to NASA estimates, which many being difficult to detect more than a few days in advance, 40 meters is about the average size an object must be to make it through the atmosphere without burning up. Thousands of much smaller meteors disintegrate harmlessly each day far above the planet. The meteor that injured more than a thousand people in Chelyabinsk, Russia in February 2013, mainly by glass shattered from the shock wave of its explosion, was believed to be about 20 meters wide, 65 feet. The most recent encounter with an asteroid was on June 2nd, when a two meter boulder dubbed 2018 LA entered the atmosphere at 10 miles per second, 38,000 miles per hour, and exploded over Botswana. A chance remains that larger comets from the outer solar system could suddenly appear and hit Earth with only a few months warning 
There's also the potential for a surprise from deep space, an object whose orbit isn't bound by the sun, like the kind that showed up last October. That's when Oumuamua, a 400 meter cigar shaped oddity, whizzed past the sun at almost 200,000 miles per hour. The intriguing object was the first known to have come from interstellar space, to which it is now returning. Also in space news this week was the NASA's gateway to become the orbital outpost for robotic and human exploration operations in deep space. Built with commercial and international partners, the Gateway will support exploration on and near the Moon and beyond, including Mars. NASA released a draft solicitation through a broad agency announcement for proposals for partnership for the first element of the Gateway. NASA is seeking a high-powered 50-kilowatt solar electronic propulsion spacecraft to maintain the Gateway's position as well as move it between lunar orbits as needed. It will also provide power to the rest of the Gateway, controls, and communications. Through this upcoming solicitation, industry will be asked to participate in a public-private partnership, which includes a flight demonstration of the power and propulsion spacecraft. Following the test lasting up to one year in space after launch, NASA will have the option to acquire the spacecraft for use as the first element of the gateway in lunar orbit. Now, is it just us? We are reading through these publications, and they are coming almost weekly now, by the way. Doesn't this all sound like a mobilization in response to something that has sent the willies right through government and is now reverberating across the world? We are being prepared for disclosure, but who makes the announcement? Do the ETs just arrive and see how we react, or is humankind in fact being kept from this type of information? Throughout history, all across countries and cultures, for as long as time remembers, there have been otherworldly beings present on Earth and to whom we refer to as the gods. We can't stress it enough that the evidence points overwhelmingly to this presence, and we can speculate that Western religion is one of control and not in that of worship of the Creator. Ancient Sumerians, Hindus, Aboriginal people, and even the Chinese have similar stories of the creation of humankind, about the first of their gods, and how they descended from the sky, and who knew vast knowledge and taught these people things that they did not know. This knowledge is in fact the seeds of modern society as we know it. As for the question of what this is, we had some interesting answers of which none were correct at the time of this video. Is it Nibiru? No. Is it a comet? No. It is also nothing near the lens like a match or moisture or indeed a hole in the ozone. We do know that this looks like something entering the atmosphere, guys, but all this is, is a trick of perception. It's a plane. The contrails from the jet are being illuminated by the setting sun on the horizon. It does make for a stunning picture, and you can see how footage like this can be used to create a bit of drama on the internet. But take it from us, it is the exhaust plumes from a jet in a spectacular setting. Look for yourself the next time you have clear skies and with the setting sun. We would also love to hear what this could be portrayed to be, so you can let us know what you are thinking, and of course, you can also disagree with this answer. Anyway guys, we will leave it there for the moment. This is number two in our Space News episode. Check out part one about the Space Force if you are interested. Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.